All right. So we're talking about the L.A. Kings today. And we have actually two stories that I wanted to go over. One of them is more fact. It's more straight from the man at the top himself. And the other story we're talking about is a little bit more speculative, but... I still do think it's valuable to at least go over this stuff. So, firstly, we had ourselves a big indication of what exactly it is the Kings plan to do for 2020-2021. As noted by coach Todd McClellan earlier today on an interview. Actually, I say today, it's actually yesterday, but, you know, I record these videos the night before I upload them. Let's go over onto the score, because they have an article talking about how Todd McClellan says the Kings are finished with their rebuild. It's time to turn the ship. Take a look at this. Here are some quotes from an interview he did with the LA Times. The players that are coming back this year, yeah, they're long-term players for us. I heard Rob Blake, the GM of the team, talk to each of the individuals saying, listen, we're basically done with the initial phase of the rebuilding. We've moved players around and out and brought different players in. It's time to turn the ship and let's start growing all of this. Oh, man. That's crazy. Now, I don't know if anybody who is looking at the LA Kings is thinking, okay, well, they say they're going to turn it around, which means they're going to contend next year, right? Nope, that's not what's going to happen here. I'm sorry to spoil your party over here. But the Kings were still one of the worst teams in the NHL last season. Bottom seven finish. They were actually even worse than where they finished off in the standings before they went on that nice win streak at the end of the year, led by guys like Gabe Velarde, Martin Furk, etc. But... The Kings were, for the majority of 2019-20, bad. It's why they kind of unloaded on some guys towards the seasons, and they traded Tyler Toffoli for Tyler Madden. They did that move, which brought in some youth. They had themselves a nice replacement in Tim Schaller, who I guess was doing some pretty okay things. I really don't know. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of a shot at Schaller. Sorry, Shalatov. But the Kings have indeed done their due diligence when it comes to making moves that'll benefit the long term of this team. And if Rob Blake is saying himself, yes, it is time to turn the ship around, we're done with the rebuild, it's only going to go up from here. Then, you know, it kind of makes sense. Because with the way the Kings have actually been kind of gifted with all this stuff, it makes the most sense in the world to just buckle down and roll out with the guys you have. Quinton Byfield was not supposed to be an LA King. I'll tell you that right now. The Kings came from a spot where they were not really in contention for that second overall pick. Remember, they won a few games at the end of the year, I think it was like six or whatever, that pushed them above some of the other teams that didn't really do all too well in the 2019 season. So they put themselves in a spot where they lowered their draft lottery odds. But they still want Quinton Byfield. And now Byfield's entering a center core of youth filled with guys like Gabe Velarde, Jared Anderson, Dolan, Rasmus Kupari, Tyler Madden, Alex Turcotte for crying out loud, and Akil Thomas. You have some very good young up-and-coming centers. You have some very good wingers like Arthur Kaliev, Samuel Fajimo, very good guys over there. You have some good defensemen. I won't say that the Kings' defensive crop of prospects is the best in the world, but they do have some guys that I like. I like Tobias Bjornfod. I like Jordan Spence, but they still have Anze Kopitar. They still have Drew Doughty. They still have Jeff Carter. They still have some pretty okay, valuable guys who can do some things at the NHL level. So if you want to build this environment where the youth carries your team forward and they learn from the best, they learn from guys who were able to win the cup twice in three years, then you surround them with the Kopitars and the Dowdies, etc. Take a look at these comments over here. This is what the coach Todd McClellan says about Kopitar and Dowdy. If I'm one of the five long-term veterans coming back, I gotta be excited to hear that. I've gotta be excited about seeing Blake bring in guys like Oli Mata and trading for Leash Anderson. Yeah, we haven't even spoken about those yet either. Bringing in the European guys who are NHL caliber. Leash Anderson, he's looking to revitalize his career after being, uh, mistreated? I don't wanna say mistreated because things were really weird in that relationship between Leash Anderson and the New York Rangers, but he was so good in the SHL, this Leash Anderson guy tearing things up, and now he's coming back to the NHL with a chip on his shoulder. He's gonna do stuff with the LA Kings. And Ali Mata was in a spot where the Blackhawks got rid of him because it was a cap dump. Straight up, there's nothing else behind that other than the fact that the Blackhawks needed salary cap space. And then they pushed things a little bit forward even more because they traded away Brandon Saad. Yeah, Blackhawks are a different team, but you know what we're talking about here. 
The Kings are in a spot where they have added these guys, and that's signaling that we're trying to make our team better and trying to push now up the hill rather than just waiting. Not necessarily to bottom out, that's a bad term, but for the cleanse to finish. I think there's more stability over here. And yeah, man, with guys like Turcotte and Velarde and Madden and Byfield challenging for center spots on this lineup, it's going to be really competitive. And in fact, if the Kings wanted to go out there and make things even more competitive than they already were, they could go out there and actually do some damage on the trade front. Take a look at this. This is an article over here on Boston Hockey Now. NHL trade chatter picks up. Kings and the Penguins circle back on Max Pacioretty. We already made a video talking about how the Pittsburgh Penguins were supposedly really interested in Vegas Golden Knights scoring winger Max Pacioretty, but according to this article, the Kings are too. Earlier in the day, two NHL sources connected to the discussions confirmed to Boston Hockey Now and Vegas Hockey Now. Yeah, we already spoke about this, but there are different versions of Hockey Now, Boston, Vegas, there's one for Florida that the LA Kings have also circled back on Pacioretty and are, as one source put it, definitely interested in finishing the deal they thought they had two years ago at the draft. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, two years ago, when Pacioretty was traded from the Montreal Canadiens over to the Vegas Golden Knights, you will actually remember that there were talks in place for the Kings to take on that contract instead. The Kings thought they were getting Pacioretty, but at the last second, Bergevin was like, nope, it's going to Vegas instead. And that trade worked out wonders for the Habs. Suzuki is amazing. Tatar is amazing. Matthias Norlander, who was acquired after that draft pick that the Habs acquired in the Pacioretty trade, was traded down for. Pretty good stuff. But the LA Kings were in there first. They thought they had the deal for Pacioretty, but it didn't work. And now there have been numerous talks and different scenarios thrown around, another source told Boston Hockey Now and Vegas Hockey Now. This is definitely going to cost the Knights a first-round pick, too maybe even a future second? Then they start talking about whether or not the Kings could actually use a draft pick. So it's saying here that the Golden Knights would actually need to trade away a pick as well in order to move that Pacioretty contract. And, you know, that's something else for another day. But could the Kings add Pacioretty? Pacioretty going from the Vegas Golden Knights just a few kilometers more over to the shore to the LA Kings, a team that a lot of people thought he would have been traded to back at the 2017 NHL entry draft, but because he was on vacation, he wasn't able to pick up the phone, he wasn't able to actually confirm the trade was actually going to go through, which is why he didn't end up going, but still... Could the Kings recircle back and add a Max Patcher ready to a top six that'll probably include one of Villardi, Byfield, Madden, Turcotte maybe? So many good players over there with the LA Kings. And of course, you have the Anze Kopitar playing the number one center minutes as well. So there certainly are so many options here when you take a look at it. And if the Kings are going after Pacioretty, then my gosh, this team could indeed find themselves going forward sooner rather than later in a spot where they're picking up after that pretty good winning streak to end off 2019 20. They had themselves a huge showing from Gabe Velarde and Martin Furk over there, and Furk is kind of really underrated in my opinion. The guy's got an absolutely hard slap shot. I think everybody kind of knows this, but Furk broke the AHL record at the All-Star game for a slap shot, and it was actually faster than Chara's. It was crazy, especially since Furk isn't like a six foot nine monster. So we'll see so many of these pieces with the LA Kings organization come to play. Who knows if a Max Pacioretty is a part of that too, because the rumors are that they are going hard after this guy, along with the Pittsburgh Penguins too, which actually did get quite a lot of traction. So I thank you for all those who went out and checked out our Penguins Pacioretty video. But if you're a Vegas Golden Knights fan, talk to me in the comments. What do you want back from LA? Because the Kings have so many good young guys that it's incredible. You guys really could bolster up your future lineup if you take any of these Kings guys. Fajimo, Kaliev, Turcot, you name it. Obviously, you know, that's not going to be enough or too little or whatever for Pacioretty. It really depends. You can talk to me in the comments what you think about the value of Max Pacioretty. But for Kings fans, because I know I've said it a ton before. You guys are so kind to me. I really appreciate the LA Kings fans out there. What do you think about Todd McClellan's comments? You guys are turning the ship. You're no longer rebuilding. In my opinion, it's fully justified. You guys boosted that rebuild even further with that Quinton Byfield pick that you guys lucked into getting because you won second overall. The lottery's a lottery for a reason, and you guys won it. And Quinton Byfield is now your reward, alongside of all the other really good youthful pieces you have that could be better sooner rather than later. 
this Kings team is going to turn the ship around. Talk to me in the comments also what do you think about Max Patch Ready potentially coming over, if the Kings are going to go after him, and what would you be willing to give up if it's Max Patch Ready, former Canadiens captain, coming back in a trade? Tell me all that and more in the comments. Hope you enjoyed this video. Trolls 99. And bye. <laughs>